Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's late here, or maybe you're just getting up. It's early morning where you are. It's about 10 o'clock as I'm recording this. Why am I doing a video this late at night? Well, you see, my friends over at Nakashita just sent me some information, and I think it's good enough that I want to share it with you now instead of waiting till tomorrow morning. You see, Canon has registered two camera bodies overseas. We don't have a lot of information, but here's what we do have. We have the registration numbers, and they are DS-1268, 41, and 42. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that these are related to the R3. They've just announced it. It's going to be available soon. Simon, this isn't news. Well, it might not be news, but it's not related to the R3 because you see the R3 has these numbers registered to it and other things coming out at the same time, and that's DS-1268, 35, and 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59. So that leads us to speculate, to conjecture, to hypothesize as to what could this possibly be. Well, it's most likely an R system camera, and it's most likely full frame. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit excited now. The, the, I'm getting chills down my back, and it's not because it's really cold here in the basement. Do you remember a couple of rumors back? Canon kind of rumors said that we should be getting an RP replacement, and then we should be getting another camera that's going to sit between the RP and the R6. Not as capable as the R6 when it comes to video, but definitely better than what the EOS R can do. I don't know. I, I think if we're getting two cameras, this would make an awful lot of sense. As I reported on several hours ago, any R APS-C R system camera isn't due to be coming out until the first half of 20 or until the second half of 2022. That would have been one of my thoughts. What else could it be besides an RP replacement and a camera that sits between the RP and the R6? Well, let's think. I mean, there's obviously the Canon R5C as a possibility, but we've seen very little chatter on Canon rumors lately. There's also a high megapixel version of the R5. We've also heard very little about that as well. To sort of help bring things back a little bit, to help provide focus, what trade show is supposed to be happening right about now? Well, that's NAB 2021. It's since been postponed until April the 23rd through to, through to the 27th next year. But at that trade show, we're supposed to be getting, according to Canon Rumors, we're supposed to be getting two 8K cinema cameras a full frame and a super 35 along with a 4k camera with up to 20 stops of dynamic range so there's a lot that could be possibly happening here but one thing is for sure this sounds exciting what do you think these cameras could be what do you think we're going to be getting most likely with the cameras being registered we usually get an announcement within two to four weeks of that now, sometimes it can go three months, but from what we've been seeing lately, it's generally sometimes between two to four weeks, sometimes six weeks. What do you think? Going to be a cinema camera? Do you think it's going to be the R5C? Or what about a high megapixel version of the R5, capable of 100 megapixels or more? Now, I personally think that the high megapixel version of the R5 is going to be coming in the first half of 2022. The R5C, that would certainly make sense with NAB and maybe one of those cinema cameras, but I also like the idea, I really like the idea, I really want it to be a replacement for the RP, that affordable, I don't know what they're going to call it, it's probably going to have an R designation like an R8 or R7, and it's going to sell for around $8.99. That would certainly make sense. You'd want to get those cameras out in time for Christmas. Um, a lot of ordinary filmmakers and photographers would really, would really like these. The, the RP and the EOS R are really getting old in the tooth. They weren't that modern when they came out. The EOS R was just, I mean, it was just a mirrorless version of the 5D Mark IV, which came out about three years earlier. So a refresh of those two cameras, an RP with a lower price point of $899, likely without an EVF, and then another camera, which I think is going to be well, I think it would be ideal for most of us that will sit between that RP replacement and the R6. So mid-priced and mid-capable. I'm, I'm a little bit excited. Now, you know, the problem is I'm going to have trouble sleeping now. So hopefully um, 
you, you find this interesting, good news, and if you're just waking up, hopefully this will go well with your coffee. But do me one quick favor, please go ahead and like and subscribe because as I've mentioned countless times, it really helps this channel grow. The more engagement, the more liking and subscribing that you guys provide, well, the more that YouTube takes my channel and promotes it more, and that's good for me. It makes me feel better about these videos, and it encourages me to get out there late at night and produce a video if news comes out to be the first to break it. So you don't have to wait, you know, 12 hours later, a day or two or three for Tony or Fro Nose to come out with a video. Yeah, I'll do it right away. And already in the last video, I've already gotten several subscribers, so I do appreciate that. Like I said, it, it just encourages me to get out there and produce more. But that is it for now. I've got to hurry up and edit this and get it out the door because I wasn't planned. I didn't have any thumbnails prepared. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.